When President Zimmer invited me to make a new piece for the opening of the Mansueto Library, I was at once extremely excited and very touched and very honored and very humbled and also a little bit nervous, terrified, because I wanted to make sure I could tailor make a piece that would really fit that occasion, which involved celebrating libraries and books. And it suddenly occurred to me that men make books, but books make men or women. This relationship between the humanity making the books and the books teaching us back reminded me of a double helix. And then I thought, well, if I had two violins, I could actually try to paint this picture of the double helix. They're beautiful instruments, really rich in overtones and colors and humanity. It would be very interesting to thread them in and out of one another to the point where you get this beautiful counterpoint, but you don't always know who's playing what line. There's many different places to start. For, for me, what just matters is that everything is connected in a deep way and that the pieces are, orga are organic. So that what comes out of one parameter infests the other and uh, it, it becomes like a unified object. I would maybe start with something very messy like this, which is just a series of chords, and I would basically be standing here and playing them at the piano, writing them and, and sort of collecting a set of harmonies, that's what that page is. Here I might be actually uh, shaping a line, like one long line, a line that might last 80 bars. Now in the final product, I might cut it up and, and interrupt it and do other things, but there's a sense of the piece has a line going through it. Uh, I'm very particular about my rulers. They have to be see-through because I have to be able to see the, the notes as I'm writing. In terms of the pens, I have these, these ones which are very, very thin for small things like grace notes and then a series of these which I live by. So in, in any given moment, I might be using one pen and put it down, pick up the other one, do the other thing, pick the other one up and do the other one. For instance, in this particular place, I have some of the strings doing a very fast down bow all in an eighth note. So you have the entire orchestra going zoom, all the way across the bow. Uh, that's a very different sound than if you, they just write an eighth note and they go bum. I feel like I can really touch my sounds. I, when I write that down, I, it's very much me and it together. In this piece, Radiant Circles for Orchestra, I was trying to establish for the orchestra, let's say you have 100 musicians sitting there, what the general tone of the piece is. So when they get their music and they see, in this case, resonant and elegant, and they know that all together they're supposed to be making this resonant, elegant sound world, stately, playful, mm -hmm. so that there's a sense of ever-transforming character. The one comment I get all the time from players is, thank you for your adjectives. It helps them to really just jump into the piece. They uh -huh. know this should be uh, in the background, or this should be suddenly majestic. When you're inside your piece and you're making it, there are things that are logical inside of that ecosystem and things that aren't. One has to be true to the piece. One has to let the piece write them.